Hello guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey. It's your boy Max. I'm the channel host, and thank you for coming back to this channel once again. The Black Jersey's official website has just been launched, and I'm so thankful to everybody that supported me along the way, especially my team member Vincent, helping me rather with the design of the website. Um, goodness me, what a busy January it's been already. My next section of videos is going to be a couple more teasers for Super Rugby, and what better way to kick it off with five players to watch. I'm going to talk about five players from the Kiwi teams, because obviously five players to watch could mean five very key cogs for the All Blacks, debuts, wildcards, cards all that kind of ridiculously exciting stuff. The first player I want to name as a player to watch is Balin Sullivan from the Hurricanes. He's moving south to Wellington from the Chiefs in Waikato, and Balin Sullivan is getting a bit underappreciated, I feel. I know that everybody, including myself, see his younger brother, Zahn Sullivan, as a future All Black, but they're kind of forgetting about Balin Sullivan, who was still 23 years old. He didn't get a lot of game time for the Chiefs in the few years that he was with them, just because of quite a few injuries and stuff, but the thing is with Balin Sullivan, he's improved a lot, and is a really good strike runner that can come onto the ball. He'll provide a lot of impact off the bench of the All Blacks ever select him, and most importantly, the Hurricanes are going to utilize the fact that he will not hog the ball. Not only is he fast, but he's a great passer. He's got a strong offload game, while his communication is absolutely brilliant. The Hurricanes are gaining a great asset in the form of Balin Sullivan. The next player to watch is Falau Fakatava from the Highlanders. I named him as a bolter for the All Blacks in 2021, and unfortunately that just did not eventuate because Falau Fakatava, he got injured in a game against the Crusaders, but so far that season he was doing very well. He was keeping Aaron Smith out of the starting lineup, and they really packed a punch. A lot of people are dismissing him, saying, oh, the All Blacks aren't the Highlanders. Guys, the sky's the limit for this guy. Remember, he was the Dwayne Monkley medal winner in 2020, and not only that, his communication's on fire. He keeps his discipline. He's a great box kicker. Look, as I said, the sky is the limit. Um, there is going to be a bit of a controversy around his eligibility for the All Blacks as well in 2022. Ian Foster, though, I believe is going to make the argument with World Rugby and plead a case of his eligibility, and I think that's going to come around the talks of the fact that Fakatava would have been picked in 2021 had he not been injured, which I 100% believe. Fakatava, you see, moved here as a 16 year old whereas um, obviously the eligibility laws have changed so you have to live here for five years of your adult life before you represent a nation. This um, argument though I think will go through and they will understand that you can't pick a guy when he's injured. From the Crusaders as a player to watch I have Pablo Matera. This guy at 28 years old already has 80 test caps for Argentina. He will surely become their most caps player of all time. He is a ferocious defender with powerful turnover technique. He runs the ball hard as well. A selling point of signing Pablo Matera as well is that he can cover all three of the loose forward jerseys, although he does prefer to play at open side flanker. As I've said though, um, the open sides in Argentina do wear six. Um, it will be a bit of a difficult thing for Tom Christie to handle, but um, if Cullen Grace doesn't really manage to recover too well from injury, it could be in fact Matera at eight. He can cover the three, as I said, so what an amazing asset the AG Test Argentine veteran will be for the Crusaders. From the Chiefs, I have Brody Retallick, who is certain to reach 100 tests for the All Blacks this year if he can avoid injury. Retallick, as I have um, said publicly, I was very disappointed with how he performed 
in 2021 for the All Blacks. Although he played around 900 minutes for the team, as you can see on screen, Ritalik just did not have the urgency to get to rucks when the opposition had the ball. When we had the ball, he was always making the clear outs, making sure we retained possession, but he was often just standing in the defensive line when it was the opposition that had the ball. Um, Ritalik needs to up the tempo in both facets of um, going into that ruck. His lineout remains steady, but he does also seem to have lost a bit of the um, aggression in his carry. What I have said and suspected is that he's lost muscle while playing in Japan for the two years that he was signed for the Cabelco Steelers. And as I've said on the website as well in my article about a season preview for the Chiefs, um, I suspect that 2022 might be a very good season for him. Naitoa Akoi, Josh Lord, Tupavai, all very young players will be looking to get mentoring off Brody Retallick, you see. And having those guys really relying on him, maybe that's going to get the guy to think, you know what, I want to perform in order to uh, mentor these guys and show them how it's done. If that's the case, I'm very excited to see how Retallick goes, because something like that will be a great motivation motivator for the big man, I do think. To round off the video, probably a bit controversial my take on the situation, but as many people know, Roger Tuivasashek has converted codes from Rugby League to Rugby Union. A lot of people are getting very, very hyped about it, and for good reason, we all know he will become the Blues starting 12 now that TJ Fayani has exited the stage. The thing is with Tuivasashek though, for every um, Israel Folau or Sonny Bill Williams you have, you also have a bunch of Denny Solomonas or Benji Marshalls. It's just the reality, converting codes is a very difficult thing. There's a lot of different laws in League 2 Union, and Sonny Bill during his All Blacks career even forgot that sometimes, as shown by this case in Buenos Aires. My point is with Tui Vasashek that although Ian Foster looks primed to select him for the All Blacks, I'm here to argue against the case of David Havili being dropped for Roger Tui Vasashek. You see, David Havili has played 710 minutes in the 12 jersey, as you can see through the depth chart I have on screen for 12, whereas Quintu Pyre has played 392 minutes, and Jack Goodhue, who is actually a 13, has played 350. The All Blacks have played 21 tests since Ian Foster took charge as the head coach in 2020, and so this means Havili has, of course, as you can see, um, he's played 42.3% of the minutes that have been offered in the 12 jersey since Foster took over. Um, if Havili does not play any more um, from now, and uh, we go to the 2023 World Cup without Havili, um, playing another 21 tests, that still means Havili will have taken up 21.1% of the 2023 depth chart, although not being there. Um, so just prior to that World Cup, Havili's minutes will go to grey if he's not selected, the grey colour there. And as you can see, Ngani Laomapi, his 85 minutes have already gone grey. There's also a yellow card that's gone grey, of course. Um, so that means at a World Cup, a minimum of 25% of the minutes in the role that is a key decision-making role um, will be gone if David Hivelli's not selected anymore. So my solution, keep Roger Tuivasa-Shek in there, but keep Hivelli as well. Roger Tuivasa-Shek, because of his um, ability to play fullback from league, and also Auckland planned to select him on the wing, as you can see here, before lockdown cancelled their season. So how about Roger Tuivasa-Shek stars as the utility back off the bench if somebody is injured. I think that will be a great way to fit everybody into the team. Not only that, but um, if Tui Vasashek does start at 12 and Fozzie uses him as a crash ball runner, um, the same problems will occur. He's not the biggest guy 
either. I'm really hoping the Blues use Tui Vasashek for his kicking, his stepping, his passing, and his communication. They are the biggest selling points about this guy. Sure, he has the leadership to become a captain in the future, but everyone's saying he's captaincy worthy now. You're getting just a wee bit ahead of yourself, guys. We are all excited to see Roger Tui Vasashek in action. I know, and that's why I want to conclude this video by telling you to leave your thoughts on these five players to watch in the comments. Balen Sullivan is very exciting. Brody Vitalik's return from Japan is going to be very exciting. I can't wait to see what Pablo Matera brings. Falao Fakatava's return from injury could be very good. And of course, Roger Tuivasashek. Everyone continues to talk about him in my comments. Remember to join our Discord server if you're ever keen to have a yarn as well. Follow the Black Jews on Instagram. We're about to hit 13,000 followers if we haven't already by the time this is published. Also, like and subscribe to the channel and obviously click the notification bell because I want you to see all of my videos as soon as they come out again thank you so much for watching team it's much appreciated i'll see you later